Good morning, everyone. Governor, Lieutenant Governor, business leaders, legislators, members of the media, welcome. It is fall in South Carolina, uh, which means we got football going on, Thanksgiving, Halloween, and what else do you think about in the fall? Tax rate setting by the Department of Employment and Workforce. And in case there's any confusion, that's our topic for, uh, for today. Uh, let me begin by giving you the process that we go through. As most of you know, it's statutory that we review things and come up with tax rates each year for, uh, for employers. And the process that we go through is we look at the economy, how it's doing. We get estimates from the Congressional Budget Office on what unemployment will be uh, throughout the uh, next year. We do uh, an <coughs> estimate of benefits that will be paid out. And based upon that, we determine what the revenues are that will be needed from employers to pay the benefits to uh, people who become unemployed. Uh, we go through this every year. Uh, one, the last thing we look, look at are lessons learned. And in the past 13 years, we've learned two real good lessons, and I will go over them. Uh, the first lesson we learned back in 2008 and 9 was you better be prepared for this thing, because we were not. And as a result of that, when we went into the 2008-9 recession and continuing into 2010 for payments, we depleted the trust fund. We borrowed a billion dollars from the federal government. And at the end of all this, if we start the rebuilding, employers have to pay back a billion dollar loan and about 1.1 billion rebuild to get the trust fund up to where the Department of Labor says that it should be. That is not a good thing for employers coming out of a recession. The headwinds are too much for some people. The pandemic confirmed a lesson that we have learned, and that is if you're prepared, you can get through bad things. We were prepared, and we did get through it. At the beginning of the pandemic, we had almost $1.1 billion in the trust fund, which is the amount we were supposed to have based on DOL, Department of Labor, uh, requirements. We were one of 26 states, I think it is, as I look at Erica, who were prepared. The rest of them were not. We did not borrow money. Some states did. Uh, California, specifically, borrowed billions and billions of dollars and today have a monthly interest payment of $37 million to repay the loan. South Carolina employers will not go through that. While we spent a lot out of the trust fund, we wound up with $350 million in it, which meant we were not going to have to uh, uh, borrow from the federal government, but it would have meant a rebuild to go from the $350 million back up to the $1.1 something billion that is required. Uh, what saved us from that was the CARES Act money that the governor and the legislature sent toward the trust fund. Uh, and it put us in great shape and it allowed us to avoid a rebuild and it also allowed us to avoid a tax increase for the 2021 tax year. So all employers or all tax rate categories remain the same for 2021. Now let's move to 2022. We went through the exact same process. We looked at the economy. We looked at congressional estimates as to where we were going to be. We came up with our estimate of benefits that would be paid and revenues needed. We met with the governor's office, we met with legislative leadership, and we came to a consensus that the 2021 tax rate is good for 2022 as well, which is wonderful news for our employers. Uh, and it also says something about the economy in South Carolina, which is good for all of our uh, citizens. So in conclusion, no tax rate increase, no solvency surcharge for a rebuild. The trust fund is in good shape today, and with the plan we have for the tax rate structure, the revenues that will come in, we feel confident that the trust fund will stay in good shape, which is important for several reasons. Let me go back to employers. Employers today can spend their money focusing on getting employees. They don't have to spend their money focusing on higher taxes from us. 
Uh, this is a benefit that is already paying benefits to us. Uh, the unemployment rate is dropping. Uh, we're at 4.1 percent right now, much better than the national average of 4.8 percent, better than North Carolina, which is 4.2 percent. But more important than the unemployment rate is the employment numbers. And I know that many of you in the media follow this uh, very closely, but we're happy to tell you that today not only do we have more employees working in the state of South Carolina than we had pre-pandemic, but that number is going up every month for the past several months, and today is close to 8,000 more people. More people working than the beginning of the pandemic, and we're using February 2020 uh, as that date. That is wonderful news for the economy and for our employers and for workers throughout the state of South Carolina. Let me mention one other thing to us. We today, or my last check, have 107,000 posted jobs in South Carolina. So that's 107,000 people that employers need to find to go to work for them. Is that bad news or good news? Well, it's bad news that they don't have the employees, but it's good news for the economy. That is 40-some thousand more posted jobs than we had at the beginning of the pandemic, February 2020. So since the pandemic began, we've added 8,000 jobs, people actually working, and employers need 40-some thousand more people that they are actively trying to recruit. So those two numbers co combined are just tremendous news for the uh, state of South Carolina. Now, our agency does several things. We do pay unemployment benefits, but we're also heavily involved in employment and reemployment, and we are working every day uh, on that. We've got job matching programs. There's not an employee who's paid a check, unemployment check in the state of South Carolina, whose name doesn't come up on Monday morning when our local areas look at it and say, what job can he handle? They don't do it manually. We run it through the computers. We run it through our job posting computers and come up with jobs that match his occupation, his geographical location, and his wage history to openings in the area. We then send out emails and text messages to that individual. Since the beginning of the pandemic, or really about June of last year when we started this, we have sent out over 8 million emails and text messages to people filing claims about job openings. We take it a step further with employer partners. And those employer partners are people who, companies who desperately need employees, and they will work with us. And by working with us, that means when we send them a referral, they get back to us and tell us, did the person show up? Did he apply to be accepted a job? Uh, did he, if he was offered a job, did he accept it? Uh, that is an enhanced referral. Under the law, we have the authority to send someone to such an interview. If they do not go, they lose their benefits. So it is a good way for employers who want to participate in this program to ensure that they have job applicants showing up for the positions that they uh, have open. We got job fairs of every type. We got regular old in-person, we got walk-through, we got drive-through, and as of about six months ago, we now have virtual job fairs open to all of our local, 12 local workforce areas, unlimited access to it. They can run 10 a day in each area if they, uh, if they want to. I saw Brian Sterling as I walked in. We are in the process of installing that uh, virtual job fair uh, process in the Department of Corrections where, in, where inmates who are preparing to get out uh, will actually be able to participate in a virtual job fair and hopefully have a job before they get out of prison. We have worked with the Department of Corrections for many years and our goal has always been get them ready to get a job when they get out of prison. But with this new virtual job fair, our goal has changed. It is now get them a job before they get out of prison. So when that goes uh, active, we'll, I'm sure Brian will be uh, talking about it, and uh, it will be a great thing for both them and the uh, state of South Carolina. Uh, some of you may have been on what we call Scooby, and that's a software benefit portal. We run it with the state of North Carolina as our partner. We both use essentially the uh, same plans. And throughout the pandemic, many of you wrote articles about people who were having difficulty getting through the program. It is, if, if you sat down and went through it, and some of you may have, you can get through it an hour and a half and you will not have a problem. But some people desperately do have problems getting through it. 
we recognized it, and we have just gone through a complete facelift. North Carolina, South Carolina combined with our vendor, Cap Gemini, have looked at it with one goal in mind, improve the customer service uh, feel when they go through it, get more people through it with fewer problems. We are testing and testing and are bordering on going live with it. Uh, and we hope that that will make it much easier for people to get through the system uh, when it does, does go live. I do want to thank the Palmetto Project, which uh, worked with us when, they, when the new facelift was done and went into the testing process. We sent it to them, and they looked at it, did a critical uh, analytical analysis of it, and sent back all their recommendations, and we adopted uh, many, many of them. Um, <coughs> before I... Uh, relinquish the podium here. I would like to thank several people who have made what I think was a past successful year successful. Um, and where I'd like to start is with the employment employees at the Department of Employment and Workforce. About 700 employees who have worked like nothing you have ever seen for the past 18 months. Many of them work in long days. Many of them work in weekends. Many of them participating in meetings seven days a week. Many of them dealing with angry constituents. Many of them dealing with legislators who had angry constituents. Uh, they went through a lot, but I'll tell you what, folks, say what you want to about state employees. These people stood up, they did the job, they got us through it, and my hat is off to all 700 uh, of them. Um, I'd also like to thank the, uh, the governor for his leadership, the legislators, and the leadership, and specifically Senator Alexander, Chairman Alexander, uh, for their leadership and support. They certainly play a major role in it. And our business partners, many of whom are standing uh, right behind us today because we certainly rely upon them for uh, uh, support as we go through this. So that's it for me, and I will now turn the podium over to the governor of South Carolina, Thank you. Henry McMaster. Thank you, Mr. Elder. Uh, as y'all could tell, and I'll be very brief, as you could tell, the, our Department of Employment and Workforce has broken down silos. We worked closely with the Accelerate SC, with the Department of Administration, with the uh, public and uh, private employers, and everyone in between, and South Carolina has come out on top. After the pandemic, had, uh, quite, uh, contrary to the way it was in, in most uh, most other states. And that's because our business is business. Without business growth and prosperity, uh, we can't have a good education. We can't have a clean, safe environment. All those three things interact. And our business is business, and we're doing all we can to, to see that it continue to prosper. Very quickly, while we are, are, are delighted to be able to announce now for the second year, while others were announcing increases in unemployment trust fund payments, we are keeping it level. We're not, not increasing. That's because of what Mr. Elsey mentioned is we were very careful with the money. We learned the lessons from 2008, 2009. So the taxes are not going up for unemployment trust fund from the, uh, from the businesses. Uh, we did not close. It wasn't necessary to close businesses as they did in other states. That's another reason. And you'll, you'll see a pattern here that, that demonstrates squarely that our business is business, and that's what we concentrate on. We stopped paying people to stay home and not work. That helped. We did a number of other things. The trust fund, as Mr. Elsey mentioned, is, is as high now, $1.19 billion, as was maybe a little bit higher than it was when the pandemic began. We got more people working now than we did when the pandemic began. We got jobs all over the place, and they're being posted. People are getting millions of emails, text messages from the Department of Employment and Workforce saying come to work. And yesterday, we announced yet another plan following the first phase that we did some time ago, calling on our technical colleges to provide people who are out of work because of the pandemic and needed training or certificates to go into other jobs. They typically take about six weeks to get. We provided $12 million to provide those at no cost to those workers. It's a huge success. So yesterday we announced we're going to do it again, but it's going to be better and longer. It's going to last two years. I'm putting in $17 million that we have left from the GEARS funds of the, the CARES Act and asking the legislature to follow with $124 million that will provide not only money at no cost to people in high demand jobs, jobs that our businesses 
people standing here with us today say these are the jobs we need. Those are the ones that will be eligible for these scholarships for people to get not only certificates in those sorts of short-term training, uh, but also associate degrees in our technical colleges. So our business is business, it's booming, it will continue to do so, and the reasons are what you hear today. Senator? Thank you, Governor. Lieutenant Governor, Mr. Elsie, and the business community, it's a pleasure to be here today on behalf of the General Assembly. Um, I think the word that I think about today is uh, stability. Uh, what we're hearing from the work that's been done really back from um, 2008 uh, till today. Uh, I certainly want to uh, recognize uh, former uh, Senator uh, Greg Ryberg and his leadership back in, as we transformed uh, after the um, issues of 2008 to 2012 and others of the General Assembly that came together in a bipartisan support and work to put the Department of Employment and Workforce on a course of um, success of, and, and, and to be steady. And I think that's what I hear from the business community is that we need to make sure that there's stability, that there's steadiness, there's ability to plan uh, as we have seen through these last 18 months thereabouts, then obviously the use uh, that Mr. Director Elsey mentioned, uh, the, the demands and the use of the, of, of the uh, unemployment trust fund. Uh, we were fortunate to be fully funded, right at fully funded, right before uh, the beginning of the pandemic, uh, not having to do the rebuild because again of the bipartisan solid support of the General Assembly, the House and the Senate of embracing the recommendations uh, for using CARES funds uh, for the uh, trust fund. Uh, and, and that's helped our businesses, but it's also helped the citizens of this state, the claimants that were facing uncertainty and their opportunities uh, during that period of time of, of their uh, opportunities. And so by us working together, uh, we are in a position now that we can keep that stability and steadiness planning aspect for the business communities with the rates being at the same level or lower. The opportunities, as you've heard about, for the citizens of this great state uh, for employment opportunities. But again, it takes us all working together, the General Assembly, the bipartisanship, the House and the Senate, but also with these that are behind us, the business community, along with the governor and lieutenant governor. And so with us continuing to do this, uh, gives the, the, the industries, business and industries, the ability to plan uh, for next year. Uh, so as they're making those efforts there and, and with the trust fund being at the 1.19 billion there about, it's classified as being fully funded. Uh, and our ch uh, charge is to make sure it continues to stay in that way and that we continue to have this economy move in a very solid and vigorous way uh, so that we can continue to have success. So it's a pleasure now to uh, present to you Mr. Bob Morgan who is uh, delighted to say heads up the South Carolina State Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we thank you for what you're doing here in South Carolina. It's a pleasure thank to you, see you. Thank you. Good morning. The new vision of the South Carolina Chamber of Commerce is that our state's economy will be the most vibrant in the United States, creating opportunity and prosperity for all. Tax cuts and competitive tax rates will help us to fulfill that mission. I can't say it any better than the governor's quote, today's announcement will save South Carolina businesses millions of dollars, allowing them to reinvest into our state and create even more jobs for our people. The governor also said and says often the business of South Carolina is business. I can assure you as someone who talks to business leaders across the state on a daily basis, that's not just an empty slogan. Uh, businesses in South Carolina appreciate the strong support that they get from uh, the state of South Carolina, and we're grateful for that. Governor, I would also observe that it is very impressive uh, that you and Director Elsie and our legislative leaders run state government like a business, and the announcement today uh, is a great example of that for the stability, uh, for the cut in tax rates for many of our companies, and again, uh, for the competitive tax rate as we look to compete with other states around us. So uh, congratulations on this announcement. We're grateful to be a part of it. And it's now a pleasure to turn the podium over to Sarah Hazard, uh, the leader of South Carolina's Manufacturing Alliance. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, as Bob said, I am Sarah Hazard, and I'm President and CEO of the South Carolina Manufacturers Alliance. On behalf of our state's manufacturers, we would like to extend our appreciation to Governor McMaster, our House and Senate leadership, in particular Chairman um, Alexander, and to SCDU Director Dan Elzey for their commitment during one of the most extraordinary times in our history to finding a way to, to strike a balance between stabilizing unemployment insurance tax rates for South Carolina businesses and ensuring the solvency of the UI Trust Fund so that it continues to be there for South Carolina workers. Today's announcement truly highlights that commitment. Over a decade ago, as, as you've heard already a little bit today, during the Great Recession, South Carolina had to pay back, excuse me, had to borrow $1 billion from the federal government to be able to pay unemployment benefits. Our legislative leaders, the agency, and the business community came together and worked over the next 10 years to pay back the $1 billion loan to the federal government and to rebuild our trust fund over an additional $1 billion. In the fall of 2019, we celebrated this and the solvency of the trust fund, which was rebuilt to withstand practically any recession, or at least so we thought. And then we were hit with COVID-19. The pandemic wreaked havoc on the unemployment insurance trust fund like no one could have ever predicted. And in a matter of months, that decade long accomplishment was literally wiped out. So over the last year and a half, Governor McMaster and the General Assembly had the foresight to very carefully and very strategically allocate federal CARES Act funds to the UI Trust Fund. The wisdom and leadership in using CARES Act funds to shore up the trust fund is one of the key reasons South Carolina's economy remains strong and why South Carolina businesses, including our state's manufacturers, will be able to continue to invest in our state and in our workforce. Governor, we appreciate your leadership and commitment to ensuring South Carolina businesses can continue to grow and thrive here. And we are thankful that today we are here once again celebrating when our state's legis legislative, government agency, and business leaders come together that we can find solutions, making South Carolina stronger than ever. And with that, I am pleased to introduce uh, Ben Homeyer, the director of the National Federation of Independent Businesses. Thanks. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, as Sarah mentioned, uh, I'm Ben Homeyer, and I run the National Federation of Independent Business. We represent small business in South Carolina. And I want to thank the governor, lieutenant governor, Chairman Alexander and Director Elsey uh, for having us today on such an important issue. I also want to thank the General Assembly for their continued support in funding the Unemployment Trust Fund. You know, this summer the Governor and his Accelerate South Carolina group and the General Assembly made such an important decision to use those CARES Act dollars to make sure that the Trust Fund was going to be fully funded. It puts South Carolina in such a better place in many of the states across the country as you heard and even those of our direct neighbors. You know, small business has had a rough couple of years. You know, the pandemic, labor shortages, breaks in the supply chain, but South Carolina businesses have continued to persevere. You know, despite these many challenges, they've continued to provide the goods and services that customers need, and they continue to support their communities. Making sure that all of our businesses don't see this increase in their URI rates, and in many cases for small businesses are going to see a reduction, is something that we are greatly appreciative of. You know, having those extra dollars to put towards staff and inventory and operations is this critical time where the holidays are coming, where most small businesses do the bulk of their, their volume is extremely vital. So on behalf of the over 4,000 NFIB members here in South Carolina, all the small business owners and all the business owners that are represented by such great folks here, uh, I want to thank you and as we continue to operate and thrive through these, these difficult times. And I get the pleasure to introduce a fellow small business owner in Lieutenant Governor Evett. So, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. And what great news today we're giving for small businesses. You know, I can remember uh, November would roll around and you would just wait for that uh, letter to come to say what your unemployment rate was going to be for the new year. And there was always a lot of anxiety around that as, you know, 
payroll and, and, and employees are your business, your biggest cost in any business. And so you're giving businesses a peace of mind today. So thank you, Governor. Director Elsey, I think we have to give him a lot of credit in what they're doing over at Do. Uh, by getting people working, that's a direct correlation to us being able to keep these percentages down and these costs down. Uh, that's something we probably take a little bit for granted because we do so many good things for businesses here in South Carolina. But when I talk about the great things that we're doing here with my counterparts from across the country, this is not something that's happening in every state. Being able to come into 22 and keep businesses' unemployment rates down, that's not something that businesses are experiencing uh, in our neighbors to the north and the south and to the west. So uh, thank you to our General Assembly, to the governor, to do, and to all of our business partners, knowing that South Carolina's business is business, and by keeping our businesses healthy, we will keep South Carolina healthy. So thank you to all of you for coming out today and for sending these positive messages to business across our great state. And I think with that, we're going to open it up for on-topic questions. Director Elsey, a typical business, how much will they see their rates go down? How much, how much was the bottom line? Well, the, uh, the average tax category will not go down. It will stay the same. There are six categories, 14 through 19, who will see a slight decrease. Those are the categories that pay some of the highest rates, so theirs will actually come down. Well, they could be large or small, but they, their, their history has gotten them into a high pay tax rate. Governor, when you announced you were withdrawing from federal benefits, there were 81,000 available jobs in the state. Director Ellis said there's now 107,000 available jobs. Is that a sign that that strategy didn't work, or where's that story? No, it, it's, a, it's a sign that the strategy did work. Uh, you've got uh, the economy firing on all cylinders. You've got people coming back to work. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands have gone back to work in the state of South Carolina. So there is no doubt, <coughs> there are many factors, but there is no doubt that the uh, elimination of the federal uh, benefits did push people earlier to getting out and going back to their old jobs. And Joe, I think something that we should make mention is businesses across our state are adding so much more employees. We've heard announcements from like Lockheed Martin needing to add 500 employees by mid next year. W International in Charleston looking to triple their workforce by 2024. Our boating association down at the coast could add put 250 employees on today because of their growth. And so not so much as it not getting people back to work, but that's how great South Carolina economy is doing and how well business is doing here in South Carolina, that they're continuing to grow and grow. Roughly 350 million. So we would not have had to borrow regardless, but we would have had about an $800 million rebuild absent the CARES Act money. And it was the CARES Act money that allowed us to avoid the rebuild. So we went back to where we're supposed to be, right at 1.2 billion, a little under it. How much CARES Act money did you bring up? 865 million. I look to, uh, 836, excuse me. <laughs> you notice her correct me immediately. 